The time has come to face your fears. Did you look at McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, Batman, Arkham Knight, Scarecrow? The Scarecrow constantly proves to be a dangerous threat to the Dark Knight, not due to physical strength, but to the emotional and psychological damage his toxins can cause. In fact, Scarecrow tends to shy away from physical confrontations and instead lets his victims fall prey to their own waking nightmares. A doctor of the deadliest caliber, the Scarecrow's horrific acts don't stem from a villainous desire for power or money, but from an unbreakable urge to learn and hone his craft, mastery over fear itself. Did you guys ever notice that Jonathan Crane, being Scarecrow's real name, happens to be the same last name as Dr. Fraser Crane from Cheers? They also are both psychologists. Makes you think, doesn't it? Okay, maybe it doesn't. Taking, though, the tape measure right to the very top of Scarecrow's head, the figure stands about six and a half inches in height, or the figure's about 17 centimeters tall. Right? I can't be the only one that's ever thought of that. It's even spelt the same way. Not from Knight, but we're going to bring in some other Arkham-related characters that McFarlane's team have already done. Here's what he looks like next to Solomon Grundy. I'm going to bring in some of the big guys first. Here's what he also looks like next to Killer Croc. Well, hoping still to get them to stand. Here's what he also looks like next to Penguin. Of course, we're going to have to bring a Batman in. This is one of my favorite Batmans from the Arkham games. Again, not from Knight, but still close enough. Here's what he also looks like next to Ra's al Ghul. And here's what he also looks like next, next to Catwoman. I have to bring in Catwoman on a display stand simply because the figure's just not going to stand on her own. Not even the first time we've gotten a Scarecrow either. Just to slide over the one that we're about to look at from Arkham Knight and to compare it along with the in Infinite Frontier Scarecrow. But if you haven't had the chance to check out the review of that one, definitely give it a gander if you have a little bit of time. Still love the design of that updated Scarecrow. Back to Arkham Knight Scarecrow, though, the figure comes included with a trading card and comes included with a display stand. Normally, I would look at the display stand second, but we're going to look at this this first time around because I wanted to point out the coloring of the plastic seems off. This is a regular display stand we've gotten with, I don't know, just insert any character here. It does seem like it's notably lighter. It just could have been the way they've pressed it in the factory. The thing also to point out as well is there's an area very obvious outlying around the peg. It's not really as much there on the original display. I guess it is somewhat, but it's even more obvious here on the newer stand. There's also still the DC logo down below. Same exact display stand, so we're not going to commit a lot of time to this. We're going to move them out of the way. On to, though, the figure's trading card. And once again, we are getting treated to source material and not rather figure photography. That's a creepy-looking scarecrow. One of my more favorite newer designs of scarecrow. I still love the classic look of Crane, but I really like the look of him in the Arkham Knight game. Uh, of course, on the back, indicated once again, his real name is Jonathan Crane. I'm sure there's no relations. There's got to be no relations. Could you imagine there actually was a crossover at some point with a Batman and Fraser kind of spin-off series? And it turned out that Fraser was somehow a brother, a distant brother to Jonathan Crane. Okay, we're going to stop talking about that. Anyways, there is a read-up down below. You can either pause and read for yourself. It happens to be the same thing I also read at the beginning of this video. I'm going to put that to the side. On to now the figure itself. I really like the look of this one quite a lot. There is, I suppose there's still opportunity where they probably could have gone in there and added some additional coloring. I mean, in, I think, in fact, looking at even, whoops, not to drop the figure in the process, whoop, bring back the figure right here. Bring back in the card. You can see there's a lot of browns, uh, different shades that sort of don't get a chance to shine here on the figure. What, I, what you do still get, though, is one scary looking head. It has enough of Scarecrow that you register right away who the character is. One thing that's a little bit different, though, is the fact that this one does have a hood. But I do love the face on this one quite a lot. Yes, they probably could have used a little bit of extra brown in it. But what the colors they have used, though, is this kind of real dark, dark gray. It really gives an opportunity for those glowing eyes of orange to stand out. He's also got these little respirators on the sides of his mask as well. And one thing that's also nice that on this design of Scarecrow is he still retains the noose. Something I really liked about the new Adventures Batman, or new Batman Adventures Scarecrow. Also had a noose on his neck. I think that's a really nice touch. But I really like the design of the face quite a lot. There is also a gold label version of this guy, either now starting to circulate or will start circulating soon, that kind of does away with the black and the gray that we're getting on this figure, and treats it almost more of a brown coloring. So there's a lot of more of the shades of the brown I was talking about at the beginning of the review, right around the same time I dropped the figure on the floor. 
Looking at the rest of the details, though, on the figure, he's got all these little vials there on the sides of his shoulder. And, of course, he's got all the actual fear toxins here on the front of his vest. All of it is actually pumping. You can see all of them have individual hoses. The hoses themselves are made of a more softer plastic. And while they're not necessarily individual, you can see three of them at least are connecting to the middle, and you have a few little stragglers off to the side. There's also a hose that runs from the top of his bicep to the area of his forearm, where then he has the extraction, as you can see there, on the, on the hands, the little syringes that he has there. Very, very cool design on this scarecrow. In addition to that, he's got some pockets there on his belt. What I like really about this suit as well is that he has sort of a long-tailed jacket. It sort of does mimic almost like a trench coat. I guess it would be closer to being more of a trench coat. And there's still opportunities that they actually add some stitch work there to the back of the suit. Not really a lot of color, I have to admit, still. It's all basically just using black plastic. But I do like the sculpting of it. it. Does It would have done wonders, though, to add some additional coloring to it. But I like it at least for a scarecrow design like this. To keep it even black like this and keep all the colors really dark. It doesn't necessarily take anything away from the character. I just think, if anything, there could be an opportunity where they could have enriched the sculpting of the figure just a little bit more. He has a tank there located here on the back. As you can see, some additional hoses running out to the top of his body there as well, and running to the, like the back of his, his collar piece. Now, even though he does have all these hoses, it doesn't actually limit any of the articulation on the figure's head, which we'll obviously talk more about more in a moment. Some nice detailing down below. He's got a leg brace. The thing about the leg brace is that they had to break it up here in the ankle just so that the ankle wouldn't be wouldn't be limited on the articulation. So while it can still move collectively, they actually did pin it on the side of the ankle and then they sort of just left these loose on the sides of the feet to kind of give you the suggested look that he actually does have a leg brace, where really these don't connect at all. For the articulation here on Scarecrow, starting again with his head sculpt, does rotate all the way around. It will get a little hung up in some of the areas, but just again, be careful when you're rotating it. Head does look up a little bit, and head does look down one last time. Just look at that head sculpt. Oh, I love the stitch work. Such a sinister face. Okay. Resuming with the rest of the articulation, sometimes I so get lost in the sculpting of these figures. I try to kind of push forward, talk about the things, of course, I have to check off when it comes to reviewing these figures, and sometimes I just kind of stop for a second and get lost in the mold. Has that, has that ever happened to you as well? Let me know down below in the comment section. Arms do rotate all the way around. This, by the way, is softer plastic. So you're not going to have as many issues when it comes to rotating the arms all the way around. I did notice, though, on these arms, this one is a little looser than this one here. I just wanted to point this out. I'm sure it's not specifically across the line. It has to be only on mine. The figure does have a bicep swivel. The figure does also possess a double hinge on the elbow. And really, in all of that, None of these hose, hoses, the two hoses that you see right here, they're actually kind of one hose together. It's a softer plastic. But to even just to hinge the elbow, I don't have any issues whatsoever where I feel like those hoses are going to get too tight and rip right off. One other thing I did want to mention is not only is this elbow, the shoulder loose, but also the elbow is a little loose on the side of the figure's body as well. Hands still rotate, despite for the fact he does have the additional appliance on the, on the tops of his hand. It does rotate still all the way around. There's also still an opportunity for them to add a little bit of gray. I didn't want to just rush through all the articulation without pointing out some of the finer points to the figure. Like, for example, the way he's got the gestured hand. Oh, that looks cool. Love the way they've sculpted the hand. See, again, I'm talking. I'm getting lost in here. Articulation is on the top of the torso, despite for the fact he does have these hoses. It doesn't seem to limit at all the torso articulation that they managed to give this figure. Legs do split out. It's more limited on this side just because this part of the trench coat does drape in the front of the leg, but you can still do a splits on the figure's legs. You can take the legs and move them forward, move them back, mild swivel at the top of the thigh. There's a double hinge on the knee, doesn't seem to affect the leg brace, and he does also have the articulation, as we already discussed, is broken up though, so it's not a complete leg brace. He's fooling you, he's making you think that he's actually got an injury here, when in fact, the leg brace isn't really doing much of anything at all. Ankle pivot, and of course the figure does have the ever-crucial, ever-crucial toe articulation. Home run hit, I have to say. Like, I really like the look of Scarecrow quite a lot. This color, this color scheme, though, yeah, again, not a lot of color being used for this figure. The black does a good enough job on its own, and then where they've sprinkled in the colors, the grays on the fingers, the grays on the mask, and not to mention, of course, the obvious ones, the big pops of orange that he's got across his vest. Make for a very imposing, very scary, very cool-looking scarecrow. 
Generally, I don't get overly thrilled when it comes to in-game designs of characters, because they always have to redesign the classics look, classic look of these characters. Arkham Asylum games, or just the Arkham games in general, do change a lot of the characters' designs, trying to give them more modernized-looking suits. In fact, the original Arkham Asylum Batman, I still think it's one of the worst designs ever for the Cape Crusader, and usually that's across the board as well. They have to modernize the looks of the characters that it's too far removed, too far removed from the original classic designs. Here I am talking like the old guy again. It doesn't look like the classic looking suit. I get that. I know what I like, and I like the original looks of these classic suits instead. Scarecrow, though, is the exception to that rule. And while I still miss the idea that he's not got straw sticking out from his sleeves, I do like the look of this Scarecrow quite a lot. There's still enough of Scarecrow here for me to know right away who the character is. I don't have to look right away online and say, who exactly is this character? Oh, that's supposed to be the Penguin? Okay, actually, Penguin wasn't that bad either. But I like the look of Scarecrow, Scarecrow quite a lot. Yes, when it comes to translating this guy to a plastic figure, they did miss some of the browns that maybe made the additional character, or the look of the character in the game, even that much more creepier. But I gotta say, like, the work of just the plastic alone, of using just the basic black plastic, and then just only accenting some of the areas like his mask in the gray, which really, again, is a sinister-looking face to Scarecrow, and then having those little pops of orange across his suit, that's enough for me. That's all I really need. Could they have added some additional coloring to it? Yes. But does it feel like the figure is missing it by looking at it right now? I don't think it's the case at all. Scarecrow is a really cool-looking character. Enough of me liking this mold that I might even still venture to pick up the gold edition of this guy, which basically I think is still the same mold, but kind of leaning more to the browns. So if you're missing the browns that are on this guy, the gold label version of Scarecrow is going to have a lot more of that. If you guys are interested, pick this one up for yourself and haven't had any luck finding him in the wild, I end up finding this guy over on Entertainment Earth. In fact, he was just hot off the truck, and as soon as I saw they had stock of the guy, I added him to my cart right away. He is available, like I said, at Entertainment Earth. You can also buy him also other places as well. But I'm only telling you where I was able to finally find this guy. It was over at Entertainment Earth, to which I can provide the link down below in the video description. What do you guys think of Scarecrow? And do you like the modern look of Scarecrow? Let me know down below in the comments section. And also as well, maybe let me just, if you don't mind, throw a question out there to you, the viewing audience. Let me know down below in the comments section. What modernized suit, villain or hero, do you actually like, which is a quite a deviation from the original source material. Let me know down below in the comments section. Also as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and do certainly want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Also, if you don't mind me plugging a playlist, popping up also at the very end of this video as well, will be a playlist of other McFarlane stuff that I've done. More importantly, the DC Multiverse stuff. So if you did want to see all the things I've also reviewed in the past, Check out the playlist if you have a little bit of time on your hands. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.